It's me, Freddy Fazbear. And me, Foxy the Pirate. And today, um, Lil Bit and Bangle told us to react to this, and they freaked out last time, so let's do it. Yeah, it won't be scary, of course not. I'll be from the last one. What's the problem, man? Sorry, but <laughs> the pizza guy. Hmm. This happened four years ago when I was still in high school. I was told to do my last delivery of my shift. I got in my car, which was a 1999 Camry. Ooh, 1999 Camry. So nice. Yeah. I live upstate in the country, so all pizza deliveries were long drives. I remember the sun was starting to set, so it was probably around seven o'clock. I'd say after a good fifteen minutes of driving through the foresty dirt roads, my GPS said I had arrived. Ooh, it was creepy. an old little cottage-like house made almost entirely of wood. It was sitting all by itself in the middle of absolutely nothing but forest. The That's lawn weird. was completely unkept, as the grass was You're already shut height. I was used to this kind of thing, so I didn't think much of it. I took the pizza to the front door. There was no doorbell, so I knocked loudly on the door. Within ten seconds, I heard the sound of footsteps hitting wood on the inside of the house. The footsteps made it to the door and stopped. Hmm. I started to feel uneasy. I got the feeling that I was being watched. This is already creepy. And that's when I noticed there was a peephole in the door. It's the pizza guy, I called out. I heard a low, harsh sounding voice on the other side of the door, telling me to bring the pizza out back. What? I didn't like the idea if of going they'd back said that to me, I'd be out of there right. straight up. Yeah. Are you sure, sir? I called out. He didn't answer my question. The sound of footsteps didn't move away from the door, so I had the feeling he was still watching me. I almost found myself get comfortable. back to my car, but I decided I didn't want any trouble with my boss. The last time I brought a pizza back, he gave me attitude. So I relaxed. Screw your, your boss! What's more important, your life or your boss? Come on, dude. Yeah. I remember, there was a shed and a little patio back there. In the patio, there was a table with four chairs surrounding it, and one of the chairs facing away from me. I saw the head of somebody sitting in the seat. I began walking over and said, Excuse me, but the person didn't even move an inch. Excuse me, I said again louder. Don't say anything! That's already scary! Psst, over here. I turned around to see a man poking his head out from the corner of the house. The that looks like a zombie! A smile. Yeah. Come over here, I want to show you something. I freaked out, turned around, and ran around the house in the opposite direction. Back to my oh car. my god, do you I see that, Freddy? What? Look at the left hand side. And got away from there. Oh, it's and a girl with a swing set. I just saw it. Yeah. The side of the road and called the police. Eventually, I was informed that there was no sign of anybody having been in that house for a long time. I quit my delivery job a few days after that. I have no idea what would have happened to me had I gone up to that man. But to this day, I still wish I'd just turned my head to see who or what was sitting in that patio chair. Oh, and what did it look like exactly? Ah, Foxy, Foxy, open your eyes, open your eyes! What? Whoa! Whoa! Uh, that is scary. Yeah. Oh, well, his um, face is broken now, I guess. Matthew! It was during a blizzard in Valley Stream. I was getting paid $250 to watch some couple's kid while they went away for the weekend. His name was Matthew. This took place on the first night, which was a Friday night. Hmm. Matthew was already supposedly asleep while I was in the living room watching a movie. I got a knock at the door and looked at the clock. It was close hmm. to midnight. It's weird. There was no way I was opening it. Not even ten seconds later, I heard the sound of two or three men angrily banging on the door, telling me to open up. That is scary. Was about to stop. Yeah. I took a peek through the blinds, and there was somebody standing right on the other side of the window. Huh? Oh no! <laughs> you got scared by that? Shut up! First thing to call the police. They said because of the weather. It could take a while for an officer to get here. I was told to take the child and hide somewhere until an officer arrived. They wanted to keep me on the line, but 
I wasn't thinking clearly in the heat of the moment and hung up. However, it wasn't until I ran through the living room that I realized the banging had stopped. Huh. I took a second peek. Don't! No okay. There now. No. Foxy, why are you so scared of the... Okay. I heard the sound of glass shattering from a few rooms over. My knees started to feel weak as I realized they had just broken the window and were about to climb into the house. I had to run and get Matthew. I couldn't just leave without him. Of course, oh, duh! Upstairs, there was no time left to run back downstairs, as I already heard footsteps and laughter coming from downstairs. Oh no. I covered Matthew's mouth with my hand as I ran with him into his toy closet. A few minutes dragged on to what felt like half an hour as we sat there. Poor guy, he has no idea what's going on. Matthew began to squeal as footsteps on the carpet reached the outside of his bedroom door. Oh man. There was more than one person. They came inside. Oh man. Places to hide in this room. I was actually reflecting on my whole life, so sure I was going to die. Oh. We heard the sound of a police siren outside, even from in the closet. And then I heard one of the men in the room mutter, "Oh shit." Profanity! Oh crap. Three pairs of footsteps hurriedly rushing down the stairs. They didn't get far as the police later found their footprints in the backyard, leading to our shed. There were five men in total. They were all arrested. Huh. Well, that was good. Anthony. This happened when I was 15 years old. My best friend Anthony mm. wanted me to come over for the night since his parents would be gone all weekend. I rode my bike over and put it in his backyard before letting myself in through his back door. We played basically every video game he had. From FIFA all the way to Call of Duty. With oh yeah, man! Call of Duty! FIFA! As the night progressed, we moved from video games to watching half a movie and getting bored to doing prank calls at close to 10 o'clock. Anthony made a few calls to different pizza places. When it was my turn, I just dialed a few random numbers in hopes to get someone at their house. On, say, my fourth attempt, I finally reached somebody. A guy with a deep and rough voice picked up. Answering with a yeah instead of a hello. Anthony's laughing in the background made me stumble with my words mid sentence, ultimately cracking up into laughter. Oh. I had never done a prank call, so I sucked at it. The scary man. The guy on the other end was silent. I regained mm. a straight face and tried to continue with the call. It went something like this Uh, sir, would it be alright if I borrowed one of the wheels from your car? Really? What's your name, kid? My name is Bob. Really? You sure it's not Anthony? Oh, okay. Yeah, that is weird. I looked up at Anthony, whose face was noticeably full of fear. Oh, come on, dude! I looked up the phone, not wanting to be on the line with whoever that was for another second. Anthony, who the hell was that? I asked him. I, I don't know. Oh yeah! Hey, Welcome to your name. Caller ID info display your name or something? No, it shows my dad's name. We hopped on the computer that is oddly research, terrifying. Trying to figure out how it was possible to get someone's name through their phone number. It didn't make sense how he could get Anthony's name so quickly. He was way too young at the time to be on any of those personal information sharing websites. We ended up asking a question on Yahoo Answers, since no one had a similar experience. The question turned up no answers. I suggested he call his dad, but he said he wasn't supposed to have anybody over for the weekend. So he didn't want to call. What? We planned on I would do it anyway. Like... We just resumed watching the movie that we hadn't finished from earlier. Right after the phone call had left my mind, me and Anthony looked at each other. It's not as scary. Stone door opening, and then the doorknob to the front door began to it's turn. It's a girl saw it was. It only was able to turn about halfway before the lock restricted it. Anthony turned off the TV. So is you the one who jumped when my guy was at the bus. window? I spread the blinds open. No, do not! There was a tall guy standing outside. He noticed the blinds moving and turned to look at me. Mm -hmm. I practically threw the blinds back into place. Me and Anthony hid in the kitchen, listening for any more noises. We heard the sound of the gates of the backyard opening. Oh, man! The kitchen window. That was terrifying. God damn it, I said. I forgot to shut the back door. 
Anthony urged me to run and shut it. I made it to the hallway leading to his back door and froze. There was a silhouette standing outside the back door. Oh, man. I don't think he noticed me, but he was surely looking into the house. He opened the door and stepped inside. I tiptoed to the kitchen and motioned for Anthony to follow me upstairs. We made it to his room as quietly as possible, pulling the door shut to avoid making any noise. We crawled under his bed. He had cloth covering the bottom of his bed, so you couldn't see anything under it unless you actually moved the cloth. The doors downstairs all opened, each one getting closer to the stairs. Thumps finally began up the stairs, and he was right outside the door now. The door to the room opened. I could hear Anthony's breathing. It was too loud. Footsteps moved over to the closet. And the closet Come out, Anthony! I could hear the coat hangers being slid around as the fabric of the jacket oh, and rubbed against each other. Footsteps moved over to the bed and stopped. I felt like my heart was about to explode out of my chest. Anthony's breathing was too loud. I had to cover his mouth with my hand. Why didn't you do that earlier? Nothing but silence in the room now. We laid still for so long, I almost thought he wasn't even in the room anymore. I moved my hand away from Anthony's mouth and whispered in his ear, You think we can make a run for it? He was mm -hmm. about to answer when the most disturbing, memory-haunting scream I'd ever heard filled my ears as Anthony was seemingly dragged out from under the bed. No! No! I oh, no! I'm struggling with the man. I desperately looked around for anything to use as a weapon. Screwdriver! With the screwdriver sitting on the yeah. stand. I hurried over to the man and drove the screwdriver into his back. Ooh, man! Anthony, as he let out a scream of agony, giving us time to get the hell out of the house. Running onto the road would give away our position too easily. It would take too long to make it to his neighbor's house. We dove for the tree line in the woods and took cover behind a bush. Guys, we're gonna have to stop it there, sadly. But, um, it was kind of cool. It was really good fun. Yeah, this has been Scary Horror Stories Animated. This, that was intense. That was very scary. Very. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, we'll see you guys next time. Bye!